Hi guys, I'm at the new shop today and I had a, um, a subscriber, viewer, contact me, local guy. He picked up a new Desert Fox toy hauler bumper pool trailer and it's in really good shape. Someone took a lot of care of it, but when he was cleaning the roof, he noticed the roof is at the end of its life. And so I uh, wanted to see what it would take to get it fixed and what I would recommend. So let's take a look at the roof. But now this roof is, it's a 12 years old. It shouldn't be quite at the end of its life, but the desert sun is a hot sun. And uh, you can start seeing black coming out here. It gets worse back here. And of course right there. And then of course right back here. So this is going to be high tide to uh, either coat it or replace it kind of see how it turned my finger black already uh, he just picked this up and he's just looking to get a couple seasons out of it so rather than put a whole new roof on it right now before he decides what he wants to do we're just going to go ahead and coat it but he purchased this and the previous owner didn't quite tell him about this cut right here that you can see almost goes the whole length of it which isn't uncommon on these and so we're going to have to peel this off and uh, you can kind of see the molding lane right here believe it or not we're going to be using uh, Eternavon roof repair tape I, I do like this stuff for tears that's exactly what I like it for uh, so we'll put it over the edge and then wrap it over and then put the molding back on top so that's where we're at there All right, so I think the best uh, way to give us the best chance of this uh, Eternabon roof tape working is I'm going to have to get clear out all this butyl putty so it'll have something better to stick to. Clean off this and clean off that as best as I can. I'll probably lay a chalk line or a straight edge so I know exactly where I want to start there and wrap it down. Rather than trying to start here and wrap over, I'll start at the top and wrap down. And of course, the roof pitches down at this point, so again, rather than trying to do one continuous strip, we'll probably put a seam right here. Of course, we want the front to overlap so water's not driven under it when you're driving down the road. Okay, so this part should be pretty simple. That'll come off pretty easily. The part I'm more worried about is going to be up here. Try my best to clean this old stuff off without tearing or pulling up the membrane. And uh, yeah, no matter what you guys say, you can't use a multi-tool on uh, this. You can see the roof's been tearing. You can actually see where it's been tearing right there. So coating wouldn't solve that whatsoever so again ideally this one needs a new roof but we're going to coat it to get it a couple more seasons and then the owner can decide what he wants to do at that point so this is just me slowly uh trying to carefully separate this luckily i've had this out in the sun getting nice and warm we just pulled it in the bay i'm not gonna work in the sun right now i can help it I'm in cover. It's gonna be hard to coat, especially back there, but I'll worry about that later. Well, I mean, this is going about as good as I thought it would go. There wasn't anything actually holding this on. The previous owner just used the, uh, the Dicor as a Band-Aid. And so, Dicor doesn't have any real strength or body to it. It's just a lap sealant. So, as soon as I pulled that sealant loose, back loose, you can actually see it didn't stick very well. That edge just pulled down. So, technically, this membrane is actually pretty loose. I'll still go with the owner and make sure this is what he wants to do. We'll have to staple the membrane back down on top before we put the... before we put the 
repair tape back on, but you can see it's probably been leaking for a little while. Alright, I'm just going to continue on. i still got a long ways to go. So I don't think it's going to go very well if I leave all the staples in too, so I'm taking out all the staples. And this is actually a lot more staples than a standard amount. So this is a little bit more tedious than I'd planned on being. Normally on a new roof, you just pound those things in. Don't even bother pulling them out. But, because i got to make sure the uh, tape sticks to that, i got to get those out of the way. But yeah, you can see this section from there all the way to there. That's at least six feet, maybe. It's been tearing, so I don't know. Maybe they, when they put the roof on, they pulled it really tight. It's the only thing that makes sense to me, the way it's tearing. I don't think it hits anything. They just pulled it really tight. Mental note, don't pull things tight. Of course, as I'm pulling out these, I can kind of feel the, the wall's a little bit mushier right there. Not a lot, just a little bit. We should be able to see. Yeah, so those are, uh, that staple's rusted. Which makes sense, because you can see rust right there. And there was rust in that hole. So it seems like this owner got it just in time to keep it from causing a problem and riding out the wall on the inside. So really all this is is a, uh, a tarp over the top of the plywood. So now I'm just out at the front and it looks like the previous owner went ahead and resealed this real fast and decided not to uh, clean underneath before they sealed this stuff down. Dicor won't stick to dirt. There's no reason trying to seal that you're going to put Dicor down. So that's a shame somebody did that. There's like no real reason to uh, waste sealing if you're not going to clean this off. You need to use uh, mineral spirits or something like that to uh, get all the old stuff off. Yes, let's make sure that this isn't torn. Doesn't look like it's torn under there. Just don't know. I have to pull off this old sealant then if I'm gonna reseal this thing. It's just I should have known better. People have a tendency of being dishonest when they go to sell stuff. All you can do is keep moving on. All right, well, here's where we're at. So I'm going to have to grab some glue and probably glue this back down. Otherwise, it'll flap too much. But I don't see too much rot. I guess we're about halfway done. Get the other half done and then uh, go from there. Hey guys, so we're back here at the Desert Fox again. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, took a little bit of doing, but I sent the customer the pictures of that roof on the other side. And, uh, give me a second. And here it is. We're gonna go ahead and do the complete roof because this roof was just too far gone and didn't make any sense to uh, try to coat it. I honestly think in hindsight what happened is this roof material comes in uh, eight and a half and nine and a half widths. This is a toy hauler. So it's about eight foot wide and about five, four inches or so. So I think they use the eight and a half foot roof. And normally this, this rubber would extend down underneath the molding and the molding ended right there. And then you'd pull it and, and put, put everything on top. I think they went with the shorter stuff and they stretched it just too much and pulled it too tight when they built, built it at the factory. And that's where it stretched enough. So we're gonna obviously replace the roof now on this. Uh, I've done this roof, uh, these roofs, I don't know how many times, so 
uh, I'll give you updates. Not going to be how to on this video. We got everything off the roof. We're going to change out all the vents. We actually are going to upgrade to the, the Max Fan Deluxe in the bathroom and then right here on top of the bunk area. Uh, of course, all the rest of the, the vents will be changed out. So when we redo this, we won't be putting the luggage rack back on because you don't want to put luggage up here anyways. I think it's pretty safe to say this skylight is going to be reused because it's actually high quality uh, cur skylight with curbing on it. Uh, yeah, here it is. This is actually like a roof skylight. So it's a nice metal base. It's really strong. So that one we don't have to replace. This one we already knew was broken. The biggest problem on this job is that, obviously besides the roof being bad, the factory, old Arctic Fox, did us dirty and used uh, quarter inch hex head screws. If you could focus, focus. Oh, there we go. And this stuff gets cut or covered in sealant and it just jams up your bit really easily. That's why if I ever put them down, I use these panhead uh, Phillips screws or square bits. That way they're a lot easier to take out. It doubles the work because you have to scrape off all the sealant just to get the screw out. And then your, your uh, screw uh, binds up anyways. I think it's safe to say the skylight was leaking a little bit too, so we'll have to figure out if that was the vent or the lid itself or the sealant. So that's where we're at. Hopefully when you see us next, we'll be having a new roof on here. The uh, other, the material is just laying on the ground on the other side of that country coach. But I don't like to take these off until I have all the materials on hand, just in case the world falls apart. We have to pull this out from under the cover. Now, of course, if you know my videos, you know that uh, when we put the new roof on, it's going to go over the top of this uh, front cap material. It'll go underneath this molding. That way we have, just like a shingle, it's directing water over the top of here, not underneath inside the front cap. And, yeah, so we would... Again, if you are going to reseal with Dicor, you do have to clean the Dicor off. Dicor won't stick to uh, dirty Dicor. Easiest way is use mineral spirits, but try to keep it off the rubber membrane. And of course, when we were taking this fin off, you can see how delicate that roof was. And uh, it tore really easily. So I think in hindsight, it was a very good idea to go ahead and replace this roof. It's what I really wanted to do from the get-go. You can see even right here how easily that tore. It was it was probably already torn, it was just under the sealant. Because I know we ran into that problem on the skylight right here too. It was torn right there. I'm actually feeling a lot better that we are replacing the roof. I definitely would have felt awful if we went ahead, put new ceiling on there, coated the roof, put the the patch on the on the radius, and then he took it out, or and it started leaking in the rain anyway. So he would have just wasted all that money, and ended up having to get a whole new roof anyways. So I'm really glad we caught this in the bud and we convinced him to do this. I think he made the right decision and he'll be able to sleep a little bit better knowing, well, when he uses this, knowing that he has a new roof on it. So even if he would have coated it with uh, the silicone or rubber roof coatings that are supposed to weatherproof it, that means this roof material underneath it was already de de degraded, degraded. And uh, if it started to peel off and it got underneath the coating, and it would have went straight into the roof anyways. That's why I'm not a big fan of coating. So the, the coating we were gonna put on this was just uh, basically the white paint to help protect the black rubber from getting sun damage on it. But I'm glad uh, we put a little bit more time and effort into taking into this and making sure that we weren't gonna spin our wheels. The, the deeper I got into it, the less I liked the idea of doing a patch repair. And I'm 
think this worked out pretty well. Right back up. Okay, so here we are. We're looking really good. The old rubber is basically off the roof. Obviously, we have to cut it off the front there. Uh, we'll prep the deck. There's really not too much prepping to do because it came up really nicely in this Arizona heat. We'll ease this uh, splintering just a little bit, but the deck itself is in great shape. The only somewhat looking watery spots are going to be right about there. I'm not sure what was there. Obviously, the roof was probably torn right about there. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Maybe a little bit at that skylight that was right there. I'm going to cut off the wires to that solar pre-wire. Uh, this is the radio. TV antenna. I think the customer wants to uh, change out to a different style now. The last thing I just have to do is get all these staples out of here, clean off the putty. Same thing I already did on the other side. We'll get the new joints taped down. Uh, ease this with the high-tech. Uh, I know, it's not high-tech. It's just duct tape. It's just supposed to keep the uh, rubber from tearing on the, uh, the edge right there. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, we might ease this edge a little bit since it was tearing on us. So we'll take a grinder, grind that down a little bit. Other than that, hopefully when you check into the snacks, we'll be gluing down the new uh, membrane and we'll be getting this thing knocked out, ready to go. Uh, our seams taped, everything ready to go. Uh, I'll take a look at this edge. You can see where this was definitely getting some water damage, but it's still nice and strong. Just some water staining at this point. So we got it just in time. And we ease the edge with the grinder so that it's not tearing the edge so much. And then of course the high tech uh, edging right there. So we're just going to be rolling this thing out here shortly and uh, it'll be done just like that. All right, so there's a new roof membrane down. We didn't have to uh, overlay this because that deck was in great shape. And I think this is laid down pretty well. We'll let that cure overnight, get everything put back on tomorrow. And now it might make more sense because before this roof, it ended right there on both sides because that's how short that material was. So I think they really did pull that pretty tight in order to get it over the edge. And we eased that edge so it shouldn't have a, a sharp edge anymore. And uh, I think we're looking great. Hopefully you guys see it next. Everything will be on there. Now believe it or not guys, <laughs> this uh, quarantine thing has uh, made getting parts pretty difficult. Even um, these little uh, gutter extensions, these spouts, I've been having a hard time finding those. Uh, I could get them in black all day, but the white ones, because uh, like the factory shut down, everybody's been out of stock on those. It's been a story on even this vent. I can get smoke ones, but not white ones. Life's just been uh, a little bit more difficult lately, but hopefully we're, we'll get through this. Other than that, Let's get this roof finished and get a happy customer. Now when I'm putting this uh, roof radius on, I'm not going to do what the factory did and pull this thing tremendously tight. I will pull somewhat just to make it taut, kind of keep uh, any bubbles down. But All right, so in uh, the corner and something like this, we're still going to put this uh, gutter extension on there. But as you can imagine, this little area is very susceptible to water coming in. Now because it's wrapped over, and it is sealed behind this molding. It is fairly, fairly tight, but once I put this cap on, it's gonna be very difficult to get actually a bead of sealant in there. So if we put all the sealant in right now, it'll ooze out and fill all the gaps and we won't have that issue. So this guy actually is gonna slide in be behind here, get screwed down. So I'll just fill this entire gap and everywhere behind with some uh, beetle sealant. It should ooze out pretty well. So, this is just the extra sealant that came with the skylight. Extra, it's just the leftover stuff. 
It's a uh, butyl sealant. It just got under there, so it's ooze in there. If I were to just use actual uh, uh, putty tape right here, this plastic would not have squished that putty enough to actually seal it up. So this is what I wanted to see, everything ooze out. Then I can just go ahead and wipe it off. The downside is this stuff's kind of stringy. That fills the gap. The last thing I'm going to do is cap this entire rail right here with a non-sagging die core sealant, just like you've seen in my other videos. Don't use sagging, because you'll make a big mess. You don't want it to roll over the edge. And of course, the only other advice I can give is as you're putting these screws in, take your time. Don't rush this part, because uh, you can screw up the entire roof job really easily at this point because as you're putting the uh, the screws in if it slips off you will slip off into the uh, the rubber although the rubber doesn't tear as easily as TPO it will tear and it's torn right at the at the seam where you don't want it to, that's the reason why we started this job remember so take your time not to do that now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, cut this roof membrane right here underneath and that'll be cutting it to fit I do not the factory sealed underneath this I don't like sealing underneath this gutter uh, worst case scenario water might eventually get in there but if we seal underneath it we've uh, prevented it from finding that this is a, an escape path it's really difficult for water to go up into it even if the pressure washer but if water gets down into it and it can't get out that's where it can actually just start rotting away your sidewall and coming down your sidewall because it has to find a way out somewhere. So I like to give it an escape path. So I don't, I don't like to put sealant underneath. I think it's a bad idea. Now with this cut piece of uh, rubber roof, this is the EPDM uh, rubber roof. So this is what most people call a rubber roof because it is stretchy. And eh, let's see if I can't make it stretch. Stretch, like an inner tube. The backside is black like an inner tube and the top side is white so you can kind of see you focus it's a sandwich of white and black the white layer is mostly uh, that UV protection for it it's uh, a lot of zinc oxide you get a lot of um, sparkles on your hands working with it but the rubber part is actually the underside so this is the important part this is what that white layer is protecting that white layer is what we were going to do originally by just coating the roof to repair it but it already torn so much even over on this uh, other side that's why we ended up replacing the roof now a TPO roof won't have black on the other side it'll just be one layer of white usually it's uh, got a stucco texture on one side all right at any rate let's get this roof finished up so of course since we're doing uh, all these roof we're doing a lot of upgrades at the same time. We're changing out all his vents. Even though those are pretty nice vents, he wanted the ones with the built-in covers, so we went with those. His AC gasket was at the end of its life, too. In fact, it didn't even stick on anymore. It just completely pulled off. So we might as well go ahead and replace that AC gasket, too. So there's our brand new AC gasket. Get that AC put on there. And, of course, that TV antenna that he did have, the cranked-up one, was... Uh, at the end of its life and it didn't need to be cranked up anymore so we're going to just go with the uh, the king control omnidirectional one that way you won't have to worry about cranking it turning it aiming it and it doesn't stick up and it won't snatch too many things so we just have one more vent to put in a tv intended to put in an ac to put on and of course a mess to clean up oh. Well, here we go. I think we're looking pretty good here. Again, that puckering around that sealant is normal. It should go away in time. A couple of days or so. Other than that, we got a brand new material on there. All our brand new vents. And so I'm going to put the molding on. This has been put on. It's been capped. It's nice and sealed. TV antenna goes there. One more vent, just like that one, is gonna go right there. All right, so there it is, all finished up. I gotta clean my mess. Micah did good work. 
We're all sealed up. Vents on. TV antennas on. AC's on. And we're all ready to go. Brand new roof. Get a leather 12 years out of this thing. As long as he treats it well. Remember to wash it every year? Well, hot. <laughs> more, than, more than once a year, but inspect it once a year. Looking really good. But this deck was really nice. Desert Fox had a nice uh, plywood base on it, so that's at least a good thing. There is one little spot right about there. That's where uh, the pre-wire for the sat uh, solar panel, solar wire is. So you'll be able to find that really easily. Ow, I hit my head. And then of course we took out the luggage rack that was back there. That doesn't do anything other than leak. What I never really noticed was that this big skylight was actually off center. So these are in the center. And that's a little off center. I wasn't expecting that. Other than that, we're ready to go. That's OSHA approved. I guess. Why not? Take videos of me now? No. All right, guys. Well, so there you have it. We accidentally did a roof on a desert fox. What was this? On a 2008 Desert Fox, we initially were just going to do a patch job and reseal the driver's side radius, but then we found all those other uh, tears. And as we tore into it more, <laughs> we found even more and more tears. So rather than just coating it and hoping for the best, I think this was the right decision because this roof was at the end of its life. Hopefully in the future, we'll check this more often. And before it gets quite that far, we would get it coated and uh, have a little bit more life in it. But of course, when you're doing a roof, you might as well start thinking about doing the upgrades like we did on those vents, TV antennas, even the AC, redoing the gasket. The labor is all the same since you're putting a vent on. It's really just going to be the price of the vent. Um, there that where it was. Accidental roof replacement. That was uh, a viewer we had. This took a little bit longer than I had initially quoted at being a couple days, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure he understands. He, I, I, I've been talking to him a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, this box of screws I got, it's been driving me crazy. I don't know how many bad screw heads I've had in it. I don't know if you can see. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the screw gun to fit under there, but it's... One of the four lobes is uh, filled with metal. What's up, dude? Yeah, pizza over here, bud. Yeah, I'm eating a little bit. Alright. <laughs> now, pizza left for you. My pizza. <laughs>